Hello, hello, Boxy Enigma here once again for another edition of the Boxy Breakdown. Uh, hey, if you're in the Northeast area, I hope you're uh, indoors like myself because it is a terribly rainy, disgusting, stormful day outside. So uh, I'm happy to be here with all of you watching the Boxy Breakdown. And uh, special thanks to all those who tuned in last week, making this the highest rated Boxy Breakdown of the new NFL season. And uh, Hopefully we continue to pick up that momentum. Um, I, last week I briefly mentioned I was going down to the Baseball Hall of Fame in Cooperstown, New York. Um, it was a great time. If you have any chance to get out there, I know this is a baseball, uh, football podcast, rather, and a football vlog, if you will. But I figure I'd throw it out there about baseball, coming off the heels of one of the greatest endings of the baseball regular season. Uh, head on out there. It's not a whole bunch of old stuff like I thought it was going to be. If you're not a history buff, which I don't claim to be, you can still go there and have a great time. A lot of new interesting factoids, uh, and every single team is represented, so I suggest it. But, with that being said, let's get into some football. You don't come here to hear me talk about baseball. You don't even hear me come here to me have me talk about the fact that this week I am planning to head down to Bethlehem, Pennsylvania for an Oktoberfest. Uh, you're, here, you're here to have me talk about some football. So here we go. Last week, I went 3-3, three and three, a second straight 500 weekend. Um, and you're probably going, Boxy, when are we going to have them winning weekends? When are you going to stop with the nonsensical excuses? And I think it's going to be this week. I'm very confident, though I am going to be picking a lot of teams on the road again. You look at some of these lines, and there might be sucker bets, but if, you know, if you're not afraid to potentially be a sucker, I think you go for some of these here. Um, as far as my usual underdog special, it's actually going to be combined this week with my special on Monday night or Sunday night special because I'm going to actually be choosing two underdogs when it comes to those picks. But before we get into any of that, let's start with this week's best bet of the week. I'll tell you right now, uh, Jacksonville Jaguars have not looked very impressive one bit. A team that in my opinion has looked pretty impressive over the last couple weeks though is the New Orleans Saints. New Orleans heads to Jacksonville and they are favored by seven. Now, I mean, you know for a fact that Drew Brees is probably going to put up 30-something points. I mean, just by looking at it, he put up 40 last week. The dude's been ridiculous. That guy almost put up, and I'm not just saying him, the Saints in general almost put up 30-something points against the Green Bay Packers. They, they did put up that many points. So you think about that, you know that's how many points they're going to put up. Is Jacksonville going to be able to compete even, even with New Orleans' suspect offense? I mean, defense, rather? I don't think so. That's my, oh my gosh, lightning like crazy over here. Uh, that is my best bet of the week. New Orleans by seven on the road in Jacksonville. I know they tell you, stay away from the road dogs. That's one I think you can go with. Uh, but I do apologize for the thunder and lightning. I realize it's a little distracting, but i got to do this because I'm about to again hit the road. So let's get through. Number two, the number two pick. Uh, last couple weeks, everyone's been talking about how bad the Giants have been. Uh, how they, uh, you know, they smashed up a crappy team, and they were not going to be any good this year, and they barely squeaked past uh, bad opponents, and they had no chance against the Eagles. And then that game happened, and the Giants looked pretty damn good. Was it an aberration? I don't know, but I also don't think that Arizona looks very good at all this year. So New York Giants by one point over Arizona, take it. That is a good game to take. I'm going to top on the Giants bandwagon for one week, and choose the New York Football Giants. Uh, never did I think in week four or any week this year I'd pick them, but I'm going to pick them this week. Uh, then you have another game where it's like, you know, I know last week the New England Patriots lost to Buffalo. I know they did. I know. Um, and uh, I know that the New York Jets lost to Oakland. So logic would say you take Oakland over, the, uh, over New England. Hold on. Let's relax. Okay, let's just let's stop all that nonsense. New England by four over Oakland. Will Oakland get to run? Yeah. But I cannot see the Oakland Raiders. And we, we could take this clip and we could bring it back and show it to me again next week. This little, this little snippet. I cannot see the Oakland Raiders beating the New England Patriots. It's by four. I think Tom Brady's going to be pissed off. I think he's going to come out. He's not going to throw four picks against Oakland. I take New England, even though they have Richard Seymour, who doesn't like New England, on Oakland. I think I'm going to take New England with my third pick by four. By freaking four over the Raiders. Final pick, and this is a tough pick because I like some picks on there. Wanted to go with that Detroit-Dallas game, but that game is a, a, a... Tony Romo looks like a man possessed, so I'm going to stay away from that game. I wanted to go with uh, the... I'm uh, sorry, the, Ra the Redskins. 
against the Rams because the Rams have looked real bad. But who knows with the Redskins? They haven't looked great in any game so far. So I'm staying away from that. My third game, and I actually want to take uh, Atlanta as well by four and a half over the Seahawks. I think the Seahawks are awful. But Atlanta, they're only one and two, so I'm not too. I'm, I'm not going to pick them. With saying that, though, I am going to take a winless team. This is going to be the week a team gets off the schneid. And I don't know how many more undefeated teams we're going to have, but this week I do think one of the winless gets off the schneid as Minnesota is favored by two points over another winless team, Kansas City. Uh, Kansas City got up last week for the game with the Chargers. They still lost, but they did get up for it a bit. That's a division game. I don't see them doing it with Minnesota, and Minnesota's got to be pissed. Minnesota, I know they're on 0-3, but that team easily could be 3-0. They've led all three of their games in the beginning, and it seems like they lose right in the end. I think this week they end that. I think they come out, they get a victory on the road in KC. It doesn't seem to matter with KC. They find a way to lose. Do not like them this year at all, and I think Minnesota gets off the schneid. And by only a point and a half, why not? Go for them. Uh, and be very wary, by the way. The team the team to be wary about, I think, is Buffalo. It's a, You'd want to jump on them at three and a half over the Bengals, but you never know. I just feel like sooner or later, that's going to have to end. I, I, don't, I don't have much faith in the Buffalo Bills. Maybe this week they continue to ride it, but just proceed with caution. And then we get to the Sunday night game, and I am very unhappy that I need to pick on this game here. Last week, the New York Jets were my best bet. Um... And again, I went with a big, big bet L on my best bet, 0-3 uh, on those best bets so far. Uh, so you might actually list my best bets. If you had so far, put a whole bunch of money on the other team, you'd be undefeated. So, But they went and came out, they laid a big donut they have over in Oakland. Do I think they get back up for the Ravens? I think they better get back up for the Ravens, but I think they will. I think they're going to be a little bit pissed off. They must be. You hope they have a better way to defend the run, even with Tromarty out and with... Uh, mangled out, I think the Jets are going to find a way to pull this one off. They're three and a half point dogs, making them my underdog special pick of the week this week. Um, I believe they're going to I want to say they'll win the game but if not, I think it'll be a close three point loss here. Jets I think will be pissed though. Uh, Namath's come out and he's dogged them. A lot of people have been dogging how much uh, Darren McFadden ran on them. Ray Rice is going to do the same. I don't think he will. Jets don't seem to have these two weeks in a row where they look like crap. Uh, last week they didn't look very good. I think that changes this week. So I am taking the New York Jets on the road in Baltimore. Underdog special, Sunday night pick, three and a half point dogs, take them. Then we get some Monday night, and boy is this an egg. Uh, well, it really, you feel for the NFL having to fit New, uh, Indianapolis and all these Sunday night and Monday night games. But uh, I guess when you're Indianapolis, and you like you usually are, Indy is uh, usually a good team. So you put them in a primetime slot. Um, they're playing the Bucks this week. My Bucks, I was so excited last week, came out, smacked around the uh, Atlanta Falcons. Um, big ups to Raheem Morris and fellow Hofstra alum. But they're 10-point favorites over Indy. Last week, Indy showed a ton of heart, and I think Kerry Collins is going to play this week. Even if he doesn't, Painter did not look horrible. I think Indy will hang around here. I don't think they want to start season 0-4. Who does? But I do think they hang around. I think they make it a game. I'm going to pick new. I'm going to pick Tampa. And who knows, it could even be a deal where Tampa's up by 16 and then they drop down and they lose by 9. But I think 10 points is a big-time spread that I just don't think I'm willing to give Tampa, though they are one of my favorite teams, I'm an NFC team. I'm not willing to give them that many points. So I take Indy as another underdog special. So to recap, we have my best bet this week, the New Orleans Saints, 7 points over Jacksonville. The New York Giants by one measly point over Arizona. Start to start to jump on that bandwagon a bit. Um, I then have the New England Patriots by four over Oakland. I have the Minnesota Vikings by a point and a half over the uh, sorry the Kansas City Chiefs. Uh, then I have my Sunday night, my New York Jetropolitans. You know I'm always going to pick them. You know I'm never going to be like Jets are going to suck this week. But they are my underdog special. My Sunday night pick, 3.5 dogs in Baltimore. And then I have uh, another underdog special on Monday night with the Indianapolis Colts by 10, taking 10 points um, to the Tampa Bay Bucks. That's all I got for you this week. I hope you enjoyed. Thank you so much for tuning in. I uh, thoroughly appreciate it. I really do. Uh, you know, you can click on this and notice it's 10, 10, 11 minutes, and you can easily exit out. But I appreciate you sitting through with the picks. I feel good about it. Obviously, I have a phone call I'm going to put on silent or attempt to there. I did. That's pretty skillful. Um, in any event, take it easy. Thank you so much again. 
you be well. Uh, if the storm has even stopped, so that's always good news. Um, and go ahead, man. If you want to leave a like on there, you want to leave a comment, always like reading those, and I will respond. Uh, they do mean a lot. I usually even go ahead and say how nice it is that somebody did that. So if you want to do that, go right ahead. Even if you want to dog me, pff, go ahead, man. You know, if that makes you feel better, it's all good in my book. Anyway, I'm Boxy Digma. Make sure you follow me on Twitter, Boxy Digma, uh, Twitter.com slash Boxy Digma. Still not going with the Facebook, at least not yet. Maybe mid-season. Take it easy. Be well.